I don't dress up in religious robes anymore. I've let my hair grow. This way I become invisible. People don't notice me as much. In the past, the convents around Lhasa were known for their yoginis, women who practiced the secret yogas. But that's all changed. New rules say that all nuns must obtain a diploma in Chinese. But I'm too old to learn a new language. That's one of the reasons why I left. Anyway, it didn't feel right here anymore. I felt I was suffocating in a hen house. These days, it's hard to find your way in life. But I'd rather be walking than sitting down. In the old days, during summer, nuns used to leave Lhasa on pilgrimage. They swapped their cushions for boots and walked across the country to visit holy places, like bees gathering nectar on a meadow of flowers. We leave Lhasa and head east, towards the region of Kham, partly annexed by China in 1951 after the Cultural Revolution. Recently, there's been a Buddhist revival in this region. But as we head east, the legend of the demoness lying over the country begins to resurface in my imagination. While the communist authorities keep a tight grip on Talasa, the ancient Tibetan-speaking regions of Kham and Amdo to the east enjoy a greater freedom. Ani and I can move around more easily. travel with in the truck lead the way. Together we enter the new promised land of the East. These nuns all hope to study at the Red City of Serta, the biggest Buddhist academy in Tibet. When the Dalai Lama left Tibet 50 years ago, the Panchen Lama remained to sow the seeds of a Tibetan revival. He convinced the Chinese authorities to build a Buddhist academy here to preserve Tibetan culture. Over the last decade, this poor remote hermitage has become the biggest Buddhist university in the world, numbering almost 50,000 students. things I would have liked to learn. How to heal the sick, understand the formation of the planets, calculate the distance to the stars. The treasury of knowledge is vast, but life is so short, and I'm too old now to go back to school. <laughs> he 
here in Serta, Chinese and Tibetans study together. At Serta, we feel free. It's more like a university here than a traditional monastery. We can study poetry, science, astrology. We don't waste time blowing horns and performing rituals. We can choose what we want to study and go meditate in the mountains during the summer. In the province of Kham, I realized just how much the Chinese and the Tibetans have come to depend on one another. Surprising as it may seem, today the Chinese are the greatest financial benefactors of the Buddhist Academy. They help the university continue to expand and develop. For a Tibetan Buddhist, when the body dies, the spirit reincarnates into another body. In this temple near Serta, people are celebrating the reincarnation of the Grand Master, represented by his wax statue. A child has been chosen as the reincarnation of the Master. And so, despite his youth, he's considered a sage. From now on, he must guide men and women on the path to enlightenment. We Chinese are now rich, but have remained poor in spirit. Before, we were told that religion was poison, but when something is forbidden to people, they naturally become curious about it. With the new freedoms in the province of Qinghai, the Tibetans have spread their beliefs into China. Their wisdom has filled a spiritual void. How can I explain it better? The happiness of one person depends on the happiness of all. This is how an awakened being sees the world. What fascinates me in the Tibetan tradition is that men and women die and reincarnate indefinitely, and each life must pursue the same goal, to ease the suffering of all living beings. Annie and I resume our journey over the body of the demoness, hoping to find someone who can direct us to the secret convent. Buddhism teaches that man is the reflection of nature. And like nature, we are subject to moods that are sometimes benevolent and at other times frightening and murderous. To live with our dark side and transform it, we occasionally meditate in places that inspire fascination but also terror in equal measure. 